Hey, what's up, guys? Let me know if, uh, if you're able to hear me, if anybody's out there watching. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. We'll get started here in one second. Need my phone. Oh, wrong with that. All right, cool. So uh, I went live the other the other night. I think earlier this week, and it was uh, I had fun with it, and I think we had a few folks join. So um, we're just kind of do the same thing. I uh, I wore this pair of. Crockett and Jones uh, Harvard unlined penny loafers today. And as you can see, just some kind of typical wear, typical, <clears throat> um, you know, scuffs and scratches throughout the day. So figured I'd kind of clean these up a little bit and figured this was a good excuse to, to go live and kind of share the process. And as folks jump on and join, we can uh, kind of chat and either talk through the process or uh, kind of go through any, any other details, any other questions anybody has. So if anybody is listening, let me know how the audio is so I can at least make sure folks can hear what I'm saying. All right. Cool. So let me... Uh, Move the camera down here in a second, and we'll go ahead and get started with these. Cool. All right. I think that should should work. Awesome. So with any shoe care here, it's just going to be pretty straightforward to get to get started. Uh, we're just going to brush these off, kind of uh, wipe them off with a little bit of water here, and see how see how things look, and then we'll go from there. I need a bigger desk or I need to organize this a little bit better. This left one, I forgot the camera was already pointed down there. This left one has definitely gotten a little more of the, uh, a little more of the, of the uh, wear, some of the scuffs. Uh, I don't know why, but I think, I think my left foot kind of, I always like wrap it around my right foot when I'm sitting and uh, I don't know. But we can fix it up. See how fast we can actually get this done. These are surprising. Not, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say surprising. But these are definitely one of 
my uh one of the pairs that I was really excited to get, but I wasn't really sure how how I'd like them, and uh, it's one of the pairs that I really enjoy the most. Um, just wearing it, like I could wear these almost every day, probably, and uh, not really get tired of them. So let's see. So I'm just gonna wipe these off with some water just to. Kind of finish the cleaning process here when i say cleaning just kind of removing of any dirt or dust and just kind of seeing how or what if anything water will do to the scuffs and scratches and that'll kind of help us help us to figure out what we actually need to do to kind of clean up some of these some of these uh signs of wear and stuff so You don't need to really use a lot of water here and you don't need to use a lot of pressure it's really just uh kind of letting the the chemicals that are in water which i guess isn't a positive thing but water is a solvent so you just want to kind of let that do its thing with the heat and the friction from the cloth that you're using or the brush that you're using and then let that dry it'll dry relatively quickly and you'll have an idea what if any uh, improvement you'll get just from that. Not bad. You can see, um, so these, this scratch here, which I'm not really sure what it was, but, um, that's like already kind of like, can't really like see it anymore. The one on the toe, you can still see, but I think that'll go away relatively quickly. Um, just kind of repeating the same thing, so we'll just let this one dry. Forgot to wipe this one off with some water, although this one's not as bad. So let's uh, still do that step, and then maybe, maybe we'll be done with that one already. That's probably like the only scratch that's on, on this shoe. Who's uh, who's out there listening, watching? Hey, what's up, David? Yeah, no, for sure. I appreciate that. I'll uh, I'll be sure to hopefully, hopefully, once I kind of get in the routine of things with with uh, maybe going live a little more often, have a have a you know more regular schedule as opposed to just kind of like popping on there. But definitely, definitely appreciate those uh, the kind words there, man. Let me if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in there, and I'll try and answer them throughout. Otherwise, we'll uh, kind of chat and connect next time. All right, so where are we? Let's see. So this this pair, this right one, I always call a single shoe a pair. I want to say like this is the right pair, which obviously it doesn't make sense, but uh, the right shoe of this pair is in pretty like decent order. There's nothing really, and I'll hold the shoe upside down because that'll make more sense. I'm kidding. Um, there's no, there's really nothing that we need to do to this this uh, this shoe to kind of get it back in regular order but i'm just going to brush these up real quick and uh, i think that'll take care of itself so then we can move on to the other i think one of the biggest question that i had early on with uh shelf cordovan was like how how much brushing do you actually need to do and i think it's probably a common question that most people have take a brush from the, the brushing I'll take a pause from the brushing as I talk here, but um, I think there, there's no like cut and dry answer. I think the the easiest way to figure it out is just brush until you either can't brush anymore 
or until you start to actually notice a difference. And then you'll get a feel for how long it takes to uh, actually like show an improvement on a pair of shell. And you can kind of use that as a baseline for, for future, um, you know, future care routines or, or anything that you, that you need to do, you know, different, different pairs are going to be different, but I think for the most part, if I say five minutes, like my five minutes of brushing may be different than somebody else's five minutes of brushing as far as how, you know, just how like rigorous it is and are, you know, how often you take breaks throughout that five minutes. So it's just kind of, you know, subjective in that, in that, uh, perspective. But I think taking that approach of just brush, brush, brush until you see an improvement and then use that to kind of, um, determine like how long and how much brushing is actually needed. And obviously like pairs or shoes that are either like newer or have, um, you know, you've, you've done less to them. will probably need more brushing to begin with since this pair is worn re relatively like frequently and therefore like I brush it relatively like frequently, I'm not going to have to brush it as long as a pair that's been like sitting there for a month. Um, so that's why I like this, you know, after like a minute is probably going to be good to go. I think that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to leave it. I was thinking about putting some paste or wax on the toe and the heel to kind of protect against this next time, but I don't really want to change how this looks at all. So that one is good. Now we've got the problem child of the pair, the left one. So before I start on these, you can see a little scuffing and scratches on the inner heel. Hopefully you can see that. And then got some right there on the outside of like where the pinky toe would be. And then right here on the top of the apron. So we'll focus, we'll focus on those areas. And I don't know what it is, but uh, I wonder if I can... You can see like right in here on the welt. I guess I could take the sheet tree out, but I'm not going to. Um, right here on the welt, like it almost looks like there's like dust. I'm not sure what that is. It always like builds up right there. Um, just on this shoe. But it's really not that big of a deal. Oh well. So we will definitely need to use or I'll I'll use this. I guess we don't need to, but I'm going to, and that's what I'll used to deal with some of the scratches but first let's do a quick quick brush we'll wipe it down again and then we'll start using the ebony stick and just for so I'll have a couple of brushes that I'll use here. So the blue one is just a standard horsehair brush. If we can get that to focus. There we go. The blue is just a standard horsehair brush. These are all from Soji Works. So this is just a natural horsehair. This is uh this is horsehair, but this is like main horsehair, so it's uh a lot softer. It's almost like a finishing brush, but I find that it works really well on shell um, just to kind of like finish that finish get it. It's like a finishing brush, but just to use at the end um, or really at, at any point, but it's, it's the opposite of like a pig bristle, which is this one. So pig bristle, bristle, pig bristle is going to be much coarser, much stiffer. Standard horse hair is your standard bristle. And then the main hair is much fluffier it's a much like plusher brush that i don't really use for like mirror shines um i think you can kind of use it for like a high shine but i just really use it at the end of of the care routine whether it's shell or calf just to kind of give it a you know a, an even um you know an even brushing 
of the oils or of the of the product that we that we put on it so all right let's grab let's grab the ebony stick here so i get a lot of questions about like where i got this and maybe this is a good opportunity to to show a few different options here so these two are wood and this is uh this is a elk bone or sleeking it's a sleeking bone this is from um a hanger project or kirby allison i'm not sure what he's calling it nowadays but um so this is just a it's like a woodwork or a leather working tool that's used for kind of like making creases or smoothing out creases and folds um they all basically do the same thing as what uh i think is more commonly seen like the uh, can't even think of the, the name of it what is it the deer bone so they all do the same thing it's really just whatever you find works the best for you um so i mean i can do what i'm going to do right now like using this i just don't really prefer i don't really like using it i don't think it at least it doesn't work as well for me i'm sure it works perfectly fine if that's what i chose to use this is oh i completely forget what kind of wood this is but this is from uh rocky mountain leather supply and this was only like 12 bucks um i ordered this when i ordered like a few hides of calf leather and this is i i'd say this is just as good as the ebony stick but it's only like like i said like 15 bucks um i really like this edge here it kind of really helps to get into some of those small areas the only thing i really don't like about this one is this point which is obviously there for a reason because this is a leather working tool but it just makes it very risky as you can see it if i can actually get it to focus on that it is it's pretty pointy so it just makes it very uh you just have to be like very careful with it because you could be going very working very easy with it and then just the wrong angle and you're gonna put a little print in your shoe best case scenario worst case scenario you're gonna like poke a hole in it so that's why i'm not a huge fan of using this one but when i do use it i just make sure that i'm always like holding that edge and i'm always, i'm either gonna use the part right here or i'll use the top part i also really like using these these ridges for the edges i don't do it that often but when i do use this i do usually go around and just kind of like clean up or polish the edges with this is that this is completely unnecessary but i just kind of enjoy the process of going through it and actually kind of buffing that up smoothing it out and shining it but the, if you're looking for a tool like this and you want one made out of wood i would highly recommend looking at rocky mountain leather supply this is the ebony stick from brift h in japan this thing is expensive. This is like this was like two hundred dollars. Um, I think it's well worth it, but it's not. You know, it's a uh, it's a luxury item. Um, it's perfectly shaped. It's hand carved and finished. Uh, ebony wood is extremely extremely dense and durable. Um, so I mean, it's worth every every bit of it, at least for me. But like I said, there are perfectly uh acceptable like substitutes out there if you want wood or uh a sleeking bone option or deer bone a spoon they all work now let's actually go ahead and use it so where are we going to start let's start on the heel here so i'm just going to use very like light light pressure just kind of going around in circles here almost like i think i mentioned this before like i'm kind of just taking the same approach as if I was trying to uh, create a mirror shine. And I say that because like with the mirror shine, you're just doing very like light circular motions with either the, the water or the wax or the combination of the two to create a smooth layer on top of the leather. And that's what actually creates the mirror shine. So you want to take this or I take the same approach with this. Like I'm not digging into it, but I'm just kind of continually going around in this motion so that the the friction and the light pressure or just the weight of the tool is creating that same that same effect and smoothing out the scratches as well as kind of darkening those uh those areas that lightened from the from the scratch
Now you can use like a drop of water while you're doing it. You don't have to, but I find like when you do that, it, it darkens it a little bit. Um, depending on the uh, on the shell or on the tool that you're using, it may gunk up any product that's on the surface of the shell. So you got to be careful about how much water you use. But um, just like at the beginning of this, where we used a damp cloth to uh, we used the damp cloth to uh, kind of clean off and let the solvents from the water kind of evaporate any of the the dirt and dust and um, you know residue that was on the shell. That's kind of what this is doing. It's just speeding up the process that would naturally happen from this. So, I mean, I could probably keep going there, but I'm going to... Uh, I think pause right there. Let me just brush this off a little bit. I am gonna put a dab of water. Can't see that, but I'm just gonna take a dab of water on the brush. That was probably a little more than a dab, but that's all right. And it's good. I don't know if I'd say it's good as new, but it's good. Um, so there, I think, like, obviously, this video has been going for 22 minutes, but uh, I think the amount of time that we put into that was like five minutes. So I think five minutes is a pretty safe bet for saying how long it would take to fix something like that. Let's, uh, let's move to the top here because this may take a little bit longer. get that lid out of the way get all these brushes out of the way let me see uh, one second let me see if I can get a better angle here for you There we go. All right, I think that's working a little bit better. So I think that is it's getting us pretty pretty close to uh completely fixing that. Uh, I say fixed. There's nothing really wrong with it, but completely removing the uh, the visual aesthetic of that scratch being there. I'm just going to throw a drop of water on it, and then we should be done once I brush these up. There's a little bit of a kind of a dull area right there, so we'll try and polish that up a little bit there as well. Now there's no, uh, you, you probably like notice I'm using different points of this uh, ebony tool. There's really no right or wrong way of doing it as long as you're not stabbing the shoe. But uh, I just kind of change it up because if you uh, look closely here, you'll see like right here is where I use it the most. And that part of the, the ebony stick has gotten pretty, that part of the ebony stick has gotten pretty like almost like buffed to a shine. Whereas in here, is a little duller and uh, same thing on the outsides here so I just kind of rotate the, the parts of the tool that I'm using but the only part I won't use is the part that has the logo on it so I don't scratch it but so I don't scratch the shoe I don't care about scratching the plate 
Um, but yeah, so it, this is almost just like a natural polishing of the wood. And uh, yeah, I think that just um, kind of shows like the, the aging of the tool and trying to even that out throughout the entire piece of wood. So that way, um, you know, that way I think it improves the, the function of the tool because it's, um, you know, smoothing out all over the place. But I think we've, I think we've just about, I think we've just about got it. So let me uh, brush this, let me brush this one off. And again, I'm just gonna put a few drops on there. So you can see. Got to clean up the area here, huh? All right. So now let's wrap up the last part here. Anybody that and I jumped jumped the gun there, but yeah, anybody that has any questions, whether it's about related to to this or in general, anything that folks want to chat about you know drop some uh drop something in the comments there this is just what i am need this was something i was going to do either way so i figured i would hop on and do this live uh and kind of share the process but anybody has anything else they want to chat about or see i am i'm an open book except for the part that's inside of the book I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure like what, what's causing like these scratches. If you look really closely and hopefully the camera will pick it up here. Um, it's not like the first set of scratches that have happened right there. And it's almost like it just breaks the finish. Um, and in the sense that like it, and you can see it a little on the inside here as well. It's just, um, not the finish of the shell, but just the top layer that's almost over the shell and uh, um you know maybe that's just like the, the maybe the leather's just dry and i just need to kind of continue to uh, condition it so maybe after i finish this up i'll throw a layer of conditioner on there and uh, we'll see how that fares uh maybe during a video um tomorrow or or monday but and maybe that's the uh the problem kind of go back to the basics sometimes when you can't figure it out. All right. So I think we're about there. Let me brush these off real quick. So as you can see, for those that have either stuck around and watched the whole thing live or those that are kind of watching this on, uh, you know, after the fact, like there's there's not much that's needed. I think in a lot of the previous videos that I've done, um, you know, or a care routine to take care of something like this, you know, ended up being like a 15 minute video. And that was like cutting out like 90 percent of what I was doing. That was really just to kind of show that concept or show what it was that I was um what it was that I was like demonstrating and actually doing to the shoe, but that doesn't mean that like that's the only way to do it. And I think like this, as well as some of the more recent videos I've done on uh, shell are is really kind of like you know a, a minimalist approach to uh, kind of caring for scuffs and scratches. Like you don't need to layer on product every single time. Hey, what's up, Jonathan? Yeah, so uh, the uh, it was a like a burgundy. Uh, it was like color eight, color eight Galway Galway. Not sure which one it is, but color eight Galway with um, burgundy Delapre or like hatch embossed leather calfskin on the shaft of the boot, I believe, on the eighty two last. Uh, I don't have it anymore. It it didn't fit that good that it, it wasn't that great of a fit 
I got it from uh, Lefeu in, in New York, and it was a bit of an odd situation on the sizing. Like the box had one size on it, and the boot had a different size on it. The uh, it was the width that was that had a bit of a discrepancy, and I don't know if it was just that I wasn't in love with the shoe or if I just wasn't really like happy with that discrepancy in the fit and that I felt it was definitely the narrower of the widths, but either way I got rid of it because the, the boot was just too narrow. Um, it was supposed to be a standard width and I think it was actually a narrow width, but, um, removing the fit from it. It's a very like Edward green in general. There are, I'll say they're like flawless in the sense of making a factory made shoe like this and just every aspect of what they put together you know there's there's nothing that they do by mistake or um you know it's unintentional like they really have well thought out designs that have been built developed and refined over you know decades and decades i guess centuries even um so they're they're great boots they're great shoes my caveat to that is that that shell cordovan galway is like twenty seven hundred dollars which is crazy um like you can get much better for less would be my argument and my position on whether i would ever consider that pair again or not but if we're removing everything else and we're just saying like, this is really the shoe that I want. I don't care about the money. Is this shoe good? Like, will I be happy with it? I would say like, yeah, it's a really nice shoe. Um, it's a really nice boot, I guess. But um, if it's really that you just, you don't really care if it's Edward Green, you just want that style boot and Shell Cordovan. I think there are definitely other makers um, out there that provide that similar style or aesthetic at a uh, equal cost with you know much more hand uh handwork in it or fully handmade or you could just you know get it at a lower cost still through like a factory made um brand like uh carmina offers some but um you know, i'm thinking more along the lines of still kind of doing like the two thousand twenty five hundred dollar range but getting like a fully handmade boot, I think is a far superior choice to the Edward Green route. But that's the long answer of, yeah, it's a great boot. It's not the most uh, kind of like cost to value um, effective option out there though. Hey, Aura, so um, Aura is asking about Carlos Santos shoes. Um, and, uh, first, you know, welcome, welcome to the, the shoe game, the shoe world. Uh, good luck. It's, uh, it is a fun, but, um, it can be a fun, but, uh, you know, costly game or community to be a part of. I would, uh, just caution you that, but, uh, welcome. I think, I think it's great. It's a great community to be part of and great. Um, great item to to collect and invest in. So Carlos Santos. Now I don't own any pairs of Carlos Santos. I think I'd say like they're in the uh probably like right below Kraken and Jones, maybe price point wise, and probably in like the Carmina uh, TLB. Um, I can't think of any other names right now, but in in that like range of shoes which is like the mid to uh, upper mid range of uh, factory made shoes. So kind of have like a $200 shoe, which is like your entry level Goodyear welded factory shoe. You have like the thousand dollar plus factory made shoes. Like we were talking about with like Edward Green, um, Gaziano and Girling, And then you have that mid to mid upper range of factory made shoes, which is where I would say like Carlos Santos comes into play. Um, so I think they make really nice looking shoes. Um, the prop or not the problem, the, the thing that, that has kind of kept me away from 
ever wanting to try them is just that like there's there's not much you there's not much about their shoes that's unique or differentiating from Carmina or the the other like comparables that I mentioned and once I had already invested in getting my sizing from Carmina or TLB like there wasn't much advantage in trying others that were at that same level because I had already figured out you know the the sizing that I needed for the brands <clears throat> the brands that I had wanted um so there wasn't really a pull from Carlos Santos to make me want to try something that they offered that said they do offer a lot of patina options which is quite unique if you're looking at the Sma the Spanish made brands like TLB and Carmina because they don't necessarily offer the same range of patina options as Carlos Santos does so if that is what it is that's kind of pulling you in that direction um i think it makes sense i think if there is if you're just looking for like a black cap toe oxford or you know a dark brown like a very like classic looking shape aesthetic uh shoe i think the um tlb option may be like the best route to go in that tlb artista in that range but um i think carlos santos is a great option if you know there's something specific about them that's really like pulling you in that you're not seeing from someone else so i think that is where the uh where their value comes into play is their uniqueness let me see if i can pull this camera back up so you're not just uh looking at a pair of shoes here There we go. All right, so hopefully that, that was helpful. I, I, really, I just kind of noticed, well, I didn't notice, but I know on both of those questions, uh, you guys asked me about Edward Green, and then I started talking about other options, and then you asked me about Carlos Santos, and I immediately went to other options. But I think that's just because the the answer, there are so many like great brands out there today, it's kind of hard to, uh, it's kind of hard to get a bad shoe. Like if you picked Carlos Santos, it would be great you would be fine. Like there's nothing wrong with those. If you picked Edward Green Galways, they would be amazing. They'd be fantastic. Like they're excellent shoes. So it's kind of hard to say like, no, like that's going to be a bad, bad shoe. You're not going to like it. I, I think that's rarely ever the case when going with one of these like reputable brands or any of these like heritage brands. I think the, uh, well, I don't think I know. The reason that I mentioned other brands when we were just like talking or you were asking the questions is because there's always there's always a reason like I would pick one over the other and uh, I think like that's the only value like I could add to that conversation because like I said there's nothing wrong with any of the options that that's been discussed here so I think the the value in the uh consideration on do I go with this or do I go with something else is what is the alternative and uh, what's the value of going with the alternative so um I don't know hopefully some of that made sense and some of that helped but I think we uh we obviously finished um finished these up and I'll post a picture of I guess I didn't get a picture of the before but I will post a picture of the after and uh, hopefully we'll kind of arrange um either another live stream or another like kind of not interview but chat either with um ashwin uh Weltedware or thon uh, mr renworks and scotty's scotty's corner of fun and exploration here soon uh, i really enjoy like having those conversations and i think everybody else does as well or at least everyone else enjoys listening to them um hopefully we can have those types of conversations more often with with those guys and some others because um i don't know it just kind of i enjoy it and it keeps things keeps things fresh and uh, you know get some more perspectives information out there even if it's the same information i've given you're hearing it from another source and maybe it'll make more sense than the way that that i've explained it 
I've been working on this shoe for a while now, which is my uh, Corween Shell Cordovan uh, Centurion from Antonio Meccariello. These are his from his arm range. And when I say working on them, I had just like cleaned them off and now I'm just kind of building the finish and the glazing back up on them. You can, under this like video light, you can kind of see through the layers of patina, which, you know, normally on like outdoor light, you're not really gonna see those blemishes that are on the shell, but that's the nature of this video light, which we'll have to uh, maybe like figure that out. But I'm really, really liking how this is, how this glaze and this finishing is coming back up. I think it looks really, that's got my face in it. I don't know. I think this like honey brown patina color that that is beginning to kind of glaze over and age on these is just turning out really well. And uh, this is like probably my favorite pair of shoes. So just wanted to share those. I'm going to finish these up probably this weekend, maybe or on Monday. And then uh, I don't know if I can share the process since I already completed it, but I will definitely kind of like talk about them. Um, Maybe I'll just clean them off and redo it. No, I'm just kidding about that. But yeah, so we uh, obviously ran really, really long. She said we would, uh, I would try and keep this short. And I think this is like the longest live video that I've done so far, which I've only done two. So it was either going to be the longest or the shortest. Thanks, Danny. But yeah, so I'll we'll wrap it up here. Hopefully uh, I'll add some chapters in the uh, in the description here so that way if folks join late or if folks pick this up after it's published um you don't have to watch the whole 45 minutes you can jump around to the different parts of the video and, and see the parts that are interesting to you so let me know um let me know for next time if there's a particular shoe or a particular process like a care routine that you'd like to kind of see in a live stream or a live setting that we can kind of talk and, and walk through the process or if there are particular questions or subjects that maybe you'd like to uh, chat with uh, Ashwin or with Thon about and we can arrange that. Hopefully we can get Matt and uh, Phil from Ashland Leather on here and maybe some, some other folks from the shoe community from the Instagram shoe community. So I'll drop... Uh, I'll drop all the links that I had mentioned in the description here later tonight, along with the chapters and uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody that stuck around for a bit and uh, check out the chapters here after it gets published. If you, uh, if you missed anything or wanted to catch up on anything for a second time, have a good evening guys.